Hey everyone, in this tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to use Advanced Math Method with Scanner, aka User Inputs. If you haven't watched my last tutorial, then I highly recommend you to pause this video and watch my last tutorial over this but without a scanner. If you watched it already, then let's get started. Make sure you imported your math library and scanner library. And make sure that you have your user input variable so the user can set their value for this right here. Alright, well first we can use a power function. We are going to, we are going the same order from the last tutorial. Like power, square root, etc. Alright, well now let's ask the user for the input. System dot out dot print line. Say um Enter your number first, then enter. Just making a new line right here. Your enter your power function number. Okay, now let's make a variable for that. Let's make byte. A and B. This will be I'll this is a variable where I enter the number and a power function. For example, I'll use five square. I'll just type in five and two. Alright, well now let's get the user inputs. A equals K B dot next by same goes for B. B equals K B dot next byte. Okay, now for the fun part. And I'll be explaining why we use A again after I write this or type the syntax. Make sure you have your byte right here in the parentheses. Like I said in my last tutorial, this yeah, the math functions are meant for double. But we don't want to use double. The only way to rectify that problem is by using the parentheses and your data type in here if you use other than a double. Alright, well, now to capitalize the N for math.power and then now type in A and B. Alright, well, I have A here. Like, you know that the, prog the program reads from top to bottom. So, it'll get their old value from the user input and same goes for B get the user input from the value right, once you get your answer for example I use 5 square it will calculate that and they will overwrite the old value for A and make a new value and that should be 25 well now let's, out, let's show the output to the user so they can see their answer A, yeah, A. Now save that and let's compile and run. Alright, we'll use 5 and 2. It'll be 5 squared basically. It'll be 25. Alright, that's right. Well, now let's use square root. We don't need to be uh, syntax right now. Simply get rid of it fast. And you probably can use it next time. Let's comment that so the so those not those so this function will be functional less uh not functional all right well let's change this to square root get rid of that b and b right if you have b over here then it doesn't really matter because I will have a variable but it won't be set to anything so it won't cause any error whatsoever. Alright well like I said before once you use A here like here it then it will find the answer for the square root and it will calculate it and make a new value for this A right here. I'll be using 81 81 9 but what if I want to use 82? 
Uh, it's not right. Well, the only way to change that is double. Yeah, you can delete this right here. Make sure it's next double right here. And you should get your table answer. Double, I mean. Uh, okay. Use 82. And that is right, right there. Alright, we're done with square root. Now let's do ma uh, maximum. Let's do bite again. Make sure you have your parentheses and buy here. Now you can use B again. Take out the comment so it will be functional again. So max will determine which uh, user input it, it is the highest. Save that. And just compile and run. Let's do 81, uh, 99. 99 is the answer. Okay, that's the max. Do the same thing for minimum. Same simple step, but we'll find the minimum, the lowest number, or the lowest value for the answer, or the variable. 991. One is the answer. That's the minimum. Alright, we're done with the minimum. Let's do seal. Alright, well, seal, you just need one variable again. And make sure this is double. Let's delete this area right here. No, naturally, keep the A here, make it double, because this right here is basically rounded to a number, so if you have like a, a, a data type variable that's not a double, then it will cause an error, which we really don't want, and we'll get the answer for byte format, so we won't see like number point O or etc so basically overall what I said you just input a, a double variable value and you'll get the byte answer and let's change that to be right here and same goes for here so we can see the B and you save Java C Java let's do 3.001 Oops. Oh wait. Okay, I got in there. Oh yeah, this right here. Don't forget to do that. Double, because that's the table. Uh, double. Uh, data type. Let's do three point zero one again. Okay. Oh yeah, make sure this is not functionable again. Okay, so control C, stop it. And run again. Or oh, compile and run. Let's do 3.001 again. And it's 4, and that's right. Now let's do floor. Same thing. But different. Save that. CLS to clear screen. Java. Let's do 4.99. It will run it to 4 because floor, whenever you see an integer or right here, the number, the whole number, then it will run down to the number. Yeah, it's 4. And that is right. Next one, we can't really use random because you really can't like input a value, but you kind of can, but not quite like power and square root, etc. So I'll be skipping that, and maybe my future tutorials we might go over that. What's useful for that? Oh, well, next one, let's use. Absolute, absolute uh, value, yeah, that's what it is. Make this functionable again, and use A or 
it doesn't matter really. You could use B. You just do minus B right here. Because everything you import and you get negative, it will always be positive since this is absolute value. Remember, absolute is always positive. Compile, run, and let's use 1, and then it should be minus 100. You get positive 99, and that's right. All right, we're done with the advanced power function with scanner. But now let's use assignment operators. You know that A equals B, and that's, you know that. But what if you want to do something more complex, like adding and something like that? All right, let's use A plus equals B. And you probably, you probably like, what the hell is that? Well, this right here is like saying A plus B equals A. Yeah, it looks weird, but that's how it is. And it's the same thing. And remember, the answer right here has to be on the left side because that's how computer reads. Assume that this right here is the answer equivalent to the equation. This should be the equation right here. Uh, same thing for minus. A minus B equals A. Right here, this is multiplication. Same thing. A times B equals A. And let's do this right here. A divided by B equals A. Let's do modulus sign take to find the uh, remainder. A modulus B equals A. And there's a shift one, which I haven't taught y'all yet. I'll be teaching you in the future tutorials. I just want, I just thought, yeah, I'm not going to go over this, what it means, really. In the future tutorials, I will. So it's saying A shift right, B equals A. Same goes for here. Shift left equals B, or not B, equals A. And well, I'm done with this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for my next tutorial. And make sure you subscribe me. Thank you.